In this unit, we're going to look at lighting. Lighting seems like a complicated topic, but often I think it's complicated not because it's hard, but because it takes money. You already had to buy your camera, or you're using your phone maybe as a camera. Then lights, yeah, you don't have lights just lying around, do you? You have to get them. So let's look into lights and see what are some of the tricks to get good lighting, and is it really that hard? And the simple answer is, yeah, it is kind of hard to get good lighting. Lighting is way easier these days, at least, due to LEDs. This is something that everyone can appreciate because an LED light is a little tiny light these days. You can have a little small one. Well, think about your phone. You can use your cell phone to project a very bright light that's using LEDs. That was impossible decades ago or even just years ago. Uh, even though they had LEDs, they were too expensive. Usually we use the bulbs or other kinds of lights that get very hot. So these LEDs have really changed everything for the better. One rule of thumb I think you can follow is you never have enough lighting. That is to say you can always use more lighting. No matter how much you have, you would always benefit from having more. But it's impossible to always have more because you run out of space, you run out of money, you run out of locations to plug them in for electricity. So it's easy to say, but I do think it's something to keep in mind. More lights are always better because even if you have too much light, I mean, is that possible? Too much light. When you're outside, if the sun is sunny day, you have too much light. What do you do? You just turn down the, the exposure by increasing the f-stop on your lens. So by decreasing the exposure, making the picture darker, you can eliminate the problem of too much light. But if you don't have enough light, how do you solve that problem? That's not easy to solve. You have to depend on your camera being sensitive. And as you increase camera sensitivity, what do you end up losing? You end up losing quality. So it's a balance, a trade-off. How do you solve that trade-off? More lights. The general rule of thumb when we talk about lighting is three-point lighting. Now, I don't want to talk too much about three-point lighting because there are literally thousands of YouTube videos and web pages teaching three-point lighting. It's such a basic and fundamental and important idea. Many people teach it very well, much better than I could here. So just go to YouTube, type in three-point lighting, or go to Wiki, three-point lighting, and you will find all the information you need about it. I'm gonna just show you some general example of how we use it here in the lab. Of course, we can look at LED lights. We can also understand diffusion, and take a quick look at spotlights and cookies or gobos. So just very quickly as a an introduction or just a quick reminder or before you jump off to another website to check out to follow my lead to check it out from somebody else. Let's take a look at this three-point lighting. So three-point lighting basically is here's your subject, a person, there we go, standing here and they're looking this way, yeah, looking that way and that Three-point lighting means I have a light facing them here, I have a light facing them here, and then I'll have a light behind, shining behind them to give them some contrast from the background. So if we look at that from the top, here's a person standing here, here's his arms, his hair, and his nose, that's my big nose there. So three-point lighting means one point here, one point here, and then something from behind to light up there. Now, three-point lighting could mean much more or less than that. It, it could mean many things to different people. When you go online and check out, you'll see that many different people have different ideas about how to execute that. Three-point lighting just means it's a guideline. If you want to have pretty good lighting, this is the standard. One, two, three. You can have more, 
You can have less. It depends on your situation. You could have none. You could be outside shooting in daylight. You could be in a dark room and you want to have that dark, gritty look, then that's fine. But three-point lighting is a way to light people usually in a way that they can show up clearly on the screen. So, you know, it's a good thing to go with. Good rule of thumb. What are the lights we often see? The most common light we see is the fluorescent light, which is up in the ceiling of our classrooms and most of our houses in Asia use fluorescent lighting. Fluorescent lighting is becoming less common. It's being replaced by LED lights, but there's still these long tubes that go up in the ceiling. The fluorescent lights are not really that good for recording video because they have a strange kind of color to them. They can be a little bit too yellowish or they can flicker, so they cause problems. So you really want to stay away from fluorescent lights when possible. But remember in that last episode, I showed you an on-site, uh, on-location video record we did and we had no choice. It was a huge classroom, fluorescent lights, you just have to use them. Yeah, that's fine. If you have to, you have to. Here's a picture of our lab, our studio, and inside the marketing lab what we have is the rack up in the ceiling. Now that rack helps us to hold many things including microphones and of course including lights. So here is a light and here is a light. So this is basically seeing two of the three-point lighting. So this light's coming down this way, this light's coming down this way, and I'm sitting down here looking that way. Okay. So that's two of the three-point lighting. Let's pull back a little bit for a longer shot. And you can see here, here's a light, and here's a light. So those are my big lights that kind of fill out, fill lights. They have a cloth on them, which is a diffuser, and they give a lot of light. But you can see I also have other lights. So here's an LED light, here's a LED light, here's an LED light, and here's an LED light. So if you combine these with my two larger fluorescent lights, or they're, they're a special kind of fluorescent, they're not the normal classroom kind, so they look very nice, they work very well for photography. You can see what we have is a group here and a group here. So this is kind of, again, the two points of the three-point lighting, so it does follow that idea. Now let's turn around the camera, look at the back of the lab, the other way around. And from here you can see, here is that big light hanging there, and here is that other big light hanging there. And then here's a group of LEDs and this LED, so this is basically one, and this is basically two, so shining in this way again. Now where's three? Well, you're not seeing three, it's down here on the floor, pointing up from the green screen, but you can't see it in this picture here. And there it is. This is the number three light I have. Now I have more than just this one, but this is one that you can see. I have another one in another corner, and I have one up in the ceiling also. The idea is to get light from behind and on top of the subjects so they can be seen clearly, distinctly from the background. Here is a number three light also, which is back behind the talent and then pointing downwards to highlight the top of their shoulders and the, the top of their heads to get them away from or distinct from the background. So in the lab we have many lights, more than three, but we still follow this idea of three-point lighting, as you can see. One more look back here at the lab again. Do you see the three-point lighting here? One, two, and then down the down bottom there, it's gonna be a light, you can't see it, that would be three. So again, this idea like this. You're always kind of working in that direction, in that way. Here's what an LED looks like for a studio. And you can see that it's not one LED, rather it's many LEDs. And 
and they'll be counted. Sometimes they'll be like 100 by 100 or 10 by 10 or 50 by 50. And so if it's 50 by 50, then it's 50 times 50 or 50 square little lights inside of there, LED lights. So there can be many LEDs inside, not just one. There are other cam there are other lights that do have just one big bright LED. Those are more expensive and more specialized, but in general, these bank of LEDs work very well and very common inside of studios. Here's what they look up close like. You can see that I've got this uh, piece of plastic here. And that piece of plastic, what does it do? Uh, here you can see the LEDs a little bit more clearly and here they're very blurry or not clear. Well, that's because this is a diffuser. A diffuser takes light and makes it more unclear, diffuses it to make it more spread out. And by spreading the light out, you make it more even, not so bright in just one spot. Now you may want bright, that's okay, but in most cases you want some diffusion and these lights come with this kind of diffuser, which is a piece of plastic, thick plastic that pushes down. Here you can see a little bit further back. So we have the LED light here. These are the LEDs all inside of here. And this is that plastic. It's a nice thick piece of plastic. It pushes down and it covers up the LEDs and makes them more diffused. Very handy. Here we can see another kind of diffuser. This is on one of our larger lights. These are fluorescent lights, but they're special fluorescent lights made for photography. And you can see that this fabric here is on top of the light. This is the diffuser, making the light more diffused, not so bright and direct. Here's what the light looks like without the diffuser. You can see it has the lights inside of it. These are not LEDs, these are fluorescent, but again, special fluorescent for photography. No diffuser there. So you could use that, you could go ahead and do that without a diffuser, but it would be very bright in some spot. Basically the middle area would be very, very bright, just coming down. But you can change the barn doors, those black uh, parts on the side there. You can fold them in and out. But even so, even if you open all the way, the light would really be coming down directly. If it was me, right on my face, and making my nose shine, making my head shine. So the diffuser helps to get the light more all over, evenly distributed. Now sometimes there are other kinds of lights you can use. This is a spotlight. And this is a very uh, specialized spotlight. It used to be spotlights are very hot. They use up a lot of electricity. And this is still kind of true, but with LED, they certainly are not as hot as they used to be. It used to be that if you have a spotlight, even just touching it would burn your hand very quickly. You have to wear gloves. But in this case, these LED lights, they can get hot, but usually when they get too hot over a certain temperature, they will turn off. They'll have a fan in there to cool them off, and you can touch them on the outside. The plastic is not that hot. They're not made out of metal. The old kind of lights that we're using bulbs are all metal. There's no plastic because it would melt. And if you touch them, you burn your hand. You have, to, you have to wear special equipment. So these are really, really great, very handy. Can be a little bit expensive depending on what kind you get. But they're very useful for projecting a very bright light in one small space. That's why they're called a spotlight. They light up a spot. In this case, the spotlight, you can see we have some lens here at the end. This lens is for focusing that light. The LED is inside of here, and then the on-off switch is back here. And you can um, loosen or tighten the connections here to make the light point in any direction. Now, this piece of paper here is made by myself and some helpers. We just cut some holes in some cardboard. So this is our uh, cardboard that comes from boxes. We take some boxes, we cut the flat parts off, and then we go ahead and put some designs on them. What are these? These are called cookies. So 
So cookies are like cookie cutters. When you make cookies, you make your cookie dough, and then you go ahead and you use a cutter to cut the shape of the cookies. You can make snowman cookies, you can make angel cookies, and you put them in the oven. Boy, I, mean, I used to make cookies with my mom, and now I'm feeling hungry. You have a cookie, right? So cookies, in this case, are some kind of paper or cardboard or metal that you cut holes into, and then you shine a light through, and that light will cast a shadow, and that shadow will be a design that you can then photograph. So it's very handy. Now here's an example of using a spotlight in my studio. And you can see that what we have here is the spotlight over here. I've got an LED light over here, and we have a blank wall here. So I would like to shoot my picture this direction, and maybe me with my head in here like this. But I would like to have something on the wall, not so boring, not so bland, not so just plain white or gray like it is now. So I can use the cookie like this. So here you can see we have the spotlight right here, and it's shining the light onto the cookie. And then you can see the cookie's making a shadow. So here's a heart shape, and then here you can see the heart shape is projected. Here's a diamond shape, and here you can see the diamond shape is projected. So cookies can create very interesting and cool designs that you can use on walls or backgrounds. Here's another cookie we made. This cookie is very interesting. This cookie is a, a kind of looks like slots, kind of like a, a vent, or maybe some kind of window with many uh, blinds, Venetian blinds on it. And so you can see that it projects a really interesting shadow against the wall. And you can move them around to get different angles. So again, our spotlight is over here, projecting its light against the cookie, and then the cookie shadow over the wall. Okay, so you can do that inside the studio. You can also do it outside. It's just a little bit harder to get just right. That's the beauty of the studio. You can get that exactly the way you want it to be.